my favorite browser extensions today on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? At Dottotech, we make technology easy so you can do more. More what? Well, I love fishing and I think flying a drone would be loads of fun. So fishing and drone flying together? What could go wrong? Ah. Today we're going to talk about my favorite browser extensions. And the beauty of browser extensions or add-ons is they take your plain vanilla web browser, be it Chrome or Safari or Firefox or Edge, and they add extra functionality. They add productivity or entertainment or security to your browsing experience. So I've got uh, five, eight, nine browser extensions that I think are awesome that I use every day that I have installed and three or four that I think are really cool that I just don't bother using myself for one reason or another, but I think you might think is cool. So we're going to go on a whirlwind tour of my favorite browser extensions. For many of these, we have videos that we recorded in the past that we will link to that might describe the application in more detail. And I'm looking for you to let me know which of these browser extensions you like, which ones you don't necessarily use, or alternates. Tell me which browser extensions you're using. Comment in the YouTube comments, even though I don't have time to reply to each and every comment, I guarantee you I read every one and I value your input. Let's begin with security, something that should always be right at the top of our attention. And I have the LastPass browser plugin installed in all of my browsers. Now LastPass is my password manager. You might use 1Password or KeePass. They've all got browser extensions that work really effectively for allowing you to create cryptic passwords, manage your passwords, and really do a kind of dual service of making us more secure while at the same time providing convenience for us quickly getting in and out of our different accounts. So whichever browser, whichever security package you use, make sure that you've got the browser extension installed for that password manager. Now, the next tool is probably the first tool I install regardless of which browser I'm using. And that is the Evernote Web Clipper. Uh, I'm, of course, a huge fan of Evernote, use Evernote all the time. It's the heart of my productivity system. And the Evernote Web Clipper allows me to curate content, to clip all the little bits of information that I find online and store them in Evernote so that I can use them in the future. I wouldn't be able to run this channel without this tool. I'm constantly clipping information that's resources for our channel. So, by way of example, I'll give you a real quick overview. Let's say I'm reading my buddy Ian's blog here, this Ian at Razor Social, and oh my goodness, he's just done such a good job on this blog. I want to save it because I want to use it for some other stuff that I'm going to be doing. So I go into the Evernote Web Clipper, and I have the option with the clipper to clip the article, the simplified article, the full page, and automatically sync it to my Evernote account. It is, as I say, it's a tool that I use virtually every day, and as far as my research goes, I wouldn't be able to conduct my research without the Evernote Web Clipper. That is a big thumbs up on that one. Actually, all of these ones I give big thumbs up to because they're all tools that I use on an ongoing basis. Now, Evernote's little brother, which I've just started to use a little bit more, and it's not actually related to Evernote, is Google Keep, which we see right here. Now, Google Keep is another notebook app, but it's far, it, it, it's, it's, it's far less full-featured than Evernote, but I wouldn't say it's inferior. It does different things. It's much more for quick and, uh, quick, and, quick and easy access to different information. I'm using it increasingly more often, but it has a clipper just as the Evernote Web Clipper does. It doesn't do nearly as elaborate uh, a clipping. It just basically clips the post that you're, the, or the website that you're looking at and allows you to add a note and possibly a tag to it, but it is another add-on that I use on an ongoing basis. I will say that I probably use the Evernote Web Clipper more, but it's nice having the it's nice having the Google Keep Clipper here as well because I'm using it a fair bit. Now we're going to get into improving my quality of work, and that is the Grammarly plugin. Now Grammarly for Chrome is a uh, spell checker. Uh, it's also a it also checks for plagiarism grammar. And it does it actively while you're in your browser. So it's checking things like if you're making a post in Facebook, it's checking the fields as you're, it's spell checking Facebook as you're going. Uh, and it, it's a tool that as I, I use again all the time. 
Now, I've purchased the premium edition of Grammarly, which adds extra functionality, uh, but the Chrome plugin is, again, something that's always active in my browser and saves my bacon an awful lot of time. Next one I want to show you is the, uh, is the Agora Pulse Clipper. Now, this is another clipper. Actually, it's a social poster. Now, this works for me uh, to help me share content that I find valuable as I go through my day. So as I'm reading different, again, let's, let's go to Ian's blog post. Let's say that Ian's blog post is something that I want to tweet out or share in one of my social platforms. Rather than going and you know, copying the URL and going over into Facebook or going into Twitter and creating a post, I can automatically create a post using the Agora Pulse tool here. I just click on that and it composes a post for one of my social platforms. So you can see here, I can create a post for Facebook, for YouTube, or uh, sorry, for Instagram, for LinkedIn, or for Twitter. So I can just quickly share this to Twitter either immediately or I can schedule it or queue it up for posting a little bit later. And it pulls all of the relevant information into place. You see that? It allows me to modify the post. It grabs the link in the URL. It brings in the graphic and the description, the, the, the social graph information from the post. So it does a really nice job of composing. And I can actually set it up to publish to multiple platforms if I find a piece of content that's valuable that way. So Agora Pulse, the plugin for Agora Pulse is essential for me in my content curation role, which which is constantly keeping my community abreast of the things that I find interesting and relevant in the online space. All right, next up is the Asana plugin. Now, Asana is my task manager of choice. Now, it's a team-based task manager, so I don't just use Asana, but the entire Dotto Tech team uses Asana. So when I I'm working on a, any document or I'm at a website and I realize that there's a task that needs to be done. Rather than going into and launching Asana in the browser, I can quickly create a task right here from the Asana uh, plugin. I can just say uh, this is a update, update speaker page because that actually is something that we need to do. This page, I can assign it to myself or to another member of my team. I can assign it to one of our different projects. So we have our website project and I can say update content. I can set a date, a due date on it. I can add an attachment or the current page as a reference if I need to. And then I create the task. And now in Asana, this task has been created. Actually, you can see it right there that a task is created for me in Asana. So that is, again, a real productivity convenience addition that we have going for us. The next plugin that I use, not daily, but fairly regularly, is the Bitly plugin. Now, what the Bitly plugin does is it allows us to use link shortening instantly. Uh, so rather than having to go to Bitly to create a shortened link and a shortened URL, if you need it for any social sharing, for any publishing, you can create a link of whatever page it's on it. And, it, and it's situation aware. It recognizes that it's on this particular page and it creates the link. So I don't have to copy and paste the URL in. So this is a great quick way to create shortened links should you need them. Now we're getting into the ones that I use a little bit less frequently, but still I think are cool. And then we're about to look at ones that I think are way cool, but I'm not using. So stick around for that. Next up, this one here is the Dayboard Site Blocker. Now I don't use this one the way that it's designed. It's designed as a productivity tool to over periods of time actually block different websites from you and not allow you to see them. Uh, while, for a period of time so that you can focus on your work so that you're not drawn to the siren song that is Facebook or YouTube or something that takes your attention away from the task at hand if you don't have the discipline to avoid going to those sites yourself. Now, I choose not to do that that way, but I do use Dayboard in another way because they've got this little additional feature. Watch what happens when I create a new browser tab. Part of Dayboard is they've got this uh, kind of built-in task tool. And what it does is it's just your top five tasks that you have to get done each day that you or that, that you want to do in, in any day is it allows you to create those tasks 
when you open a new tab. So every time you open a new tab in your browser to go and do something, you're reminded of your top tasks that you have to do. And you can check them off when they're done. And, they, and it leaves it up there saying, you've done this, good for you. So this is how you go through your most important tasks. Now this works independent of your task manager, uh, but I find it's a really nice quick reminder. And I think it's, it's a pretty cool, because rather than just have an open Google page or something like that, when you open a new browser page, being reminded of your responsibilities is not necessarily a bad thing as far as productivity is concerned. So those are the general uh, plugins that I use on a daily basis. Now, one thing I want to point out is all of the extensions that I've shown you right now are all general extensions working on pretty much all services in your browser. There are service specific extensions, like ones that I have for YouTube that help me manage my YouTube account. And there's a whole series of them that I use when I'm in Gmail. Uh, so they are specific to an individual service. We're not going to cover those today. We'll cover those in other videos coming up. So those are the ones that I'm really familiar with that I've been using a lot. There's a couple of others that I think you might be interested in, uh, that I'm going to share with you next. I'm going to go to CNET. CNET is one of those sites that I like a lot but they drive me batty because they always run a video ad autoplay with the sound on whenever I visit them. It's called the silent site sound blocker. And what it does is when you go to one of those sites that auto plays videos and the sound and the, your speaker suddenly burst out at you with sound and you just, ah, you're just, ah, I hate that. Um, this site recognizes that and blocks sound. Uh, and it gives you the option to allow the audio to play, to allow it just this one time, to reject it just this one time, or to black, blacklist it, to basically never allow sound to play from that site. And if it is a site that you've said you never allow sound to play from, but then you later on want to play sound from it, you can go and you can adjust it at any point uh, by right-clicking your mouse on the silent sound blocker here in your taskbar, and you can choose to change the settings for any, uh, for any site that you visit. Now, I hope that this is going to be one of those plugins that we have to use for a little while, but eventually we don't have to use anymore because, uh, a, I'm hoping that websites start to realize just how darn defensive this practice is. And B, most web browsers are now trying to come up with ways to combat that because the Chrome and Safari and Firefox, they all recognize just how distasteful this practice is. But until the time that when we go to a browse a site, it stays silent until we ask it to make noise, the silent sound, the silent site sound blocker is an option for you and for me. <laughs> There are one, two, three other sites or tools that I want to talk to you about. I haven't installed them and tested them myself, but in my research, I thought they're way cool. You might be interested. The first is called behind the overlay. What this one does is it allows you to continue to read anything that happens behind those annoying pop-ups that happen, uh, that force you to react to the pop-up before you can continue reading the article. Now those pop-ups are useful for internet marketers like myself for getting people like you on my mail list, but we understand the frustration that they bring to the table. This might be a way if it's something that really bothers you, you can bypass the overlays. It's called behind the overlay. By the way, we will have links to each and every one of these extensions in the description below or in the blog post. Now, the next one that I want to show you is the exact polar opposite of bit.ly. Uh, bit.ly creates a shortened link for us, which we were talking about. Uh, unshortened.link shows you what the referring link is in a shortened link, which will uh, make you a little bit safer in your web browsing, making sure you're not going to some nefarious site and so that you can understand where you're going. If like me, you are reticent to click on shortened links because you don't know where they lead, unshortened link might be the tool that works for you to help you uh, be a little bit safer and a little bit more secure. And finally, how often do you see an image that you just don't know where that image has come from, but you recognize it or you want to validate the authenticity of an image, especially in this world of uh, fake news? Tin Eye Reverse Image Search takes a look at your image 
whatever image you ask it to look for, and it searches back in the web and it finds other instances of that image. So you can find a either high resolution versions of it, you can find out who the original author is of it, you can see where it's come from, the genesis of that image. So this is a reverse image search that works a little bit differently than Google's image search, but will help you discover the origins of any images that you find online. And so that's it. My top tools, my top browser extensions, and a few that I'm not using but I think are intriguing and I might try out. I'd be really curious to know what browser extensions you rely on on a day-by-day -day basis. Please share it with me in the comments below. Now, if you've enjoyed this video today, please take a moment, subscribe to this channel, and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you're informed when we upload any new videos. That's it for today. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.